Hey there, welcome to Something About Tabletop. It's once again me, Master Blah, and my friends, the Random Hobo. Hello there. And Denzel, once again. Hello. Alrighty, um, so from last episode, we talked about actually, uh, because D20 in general, talking about it, it's so, character creation's a big part of it. So we decided to put this, uh, like a full-on lockdown of how to think about characters, kind of how to make characters, ideas on the classes from both a min-maxes uh, side, that will be mine, and a more of a thematic side. Which is more Denzel. Which is more Denzel. And maybe your views on them in general as I'm, well. I'm sort of a hybrid of, like, in between, as you yeah. would heard during the Pathfinder episode. Not to mean, not saying that I don't use roleplay, but usually I look at a lot of the classes and go, okay, this is actually quite bad. As this becomes more prevalent when playing things like Pathfinder Society and stuff like that. Um, pretty much when it comes to character creation, it, it's a really big part. You don't want to screw it up, do you? I don't. Mm, no one wants to screw up the character. Why would you yeah. want to play a bad character? Usually your first character is quite bad. Like, I remember my first character I ever played. I was a... I was a... What was a shifter. You this is a 3.5. A shifter monk. With twin... Like, a, I, I stacked decks. That's all I did. But guess what? I didn't take weapon finesse. I don't know why. I was a paradin, and I was basically a... The idea and concept... You were a force commander. Yeah. Yeah, you were a force commander. commander. Oh god, I remember that. And then you became a you basically had a space marine dude that followed you because yeah, you did. Yeah. How about yourself, Benzo? What was your first character? My first character was actually a um, elven ranger with uh, weapon finesse, dual wielding um, rapiers. Was it actually good though? Because ours were really bad. Um, wasn't too bad actually. Uh, okay, mainly okay. because I had the experience, like I said previously, of Midwinter Nights. Um, yeah, actually, I hadn't played any of those games. That, yeah, that, that's well, actually, playing D&D made me better at those games. <laughs> that was the same thing. I had played Nazi Republic, and Nazi Republic was based off of um, the D20 system, if you don't know. Your character was better than mine, though. Mine was yeah, but mine was, mine was kind of straightforward, and I had a lot more help, because I think you just sort of built yours, and I had like the person who was DMing well, me help me out. Yeah, I... Also, Denzel, I take back everything I said about you being scum. Dual warding rapiers. The only bad part about it was that you were a knife <laughs> <laughs> It's the only part you have to get actually, out Actually, my, my original character idea when I was going into it was actually going to be the Elven Ranger because um, I, I like elves oh what the hell because yeah, I played Eldar in 40k Damn so I really the like elves and the <laughs> themes behind them but I didn't do that because I somehow got my hands on the Eberron book and I saw the shifter was a thing and at the time I'm not so much anymore I really like the idea of like half animal turning into animal kind of thing but I didn't want to play a druid because fuck it screw druids that's what yeah I mean. basically I didn't really want a pet and I thought that was really cool, so I just went that. So that's, that's pretty much our first characters. And then you evolved to the um, to the dreaded dr- um, double shifter. <laughs> oh, that's no, that that's the double like and throw. That was near my end of my career, basically with three point five and these games as general. Because we never really were heavy role play, were we? No, no. During our three point five career, we were not role play focused. We were role play where's some dice to make rolling sounds I can just add it in really something <laughs> <laughs> I can just leave that in I can just add it in and you can with like dice yeah. I'm just gonna have the sound of like strenuous dice just rolling like 20 minutes or just like hitting two yeah. dice together just kunk 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 and we're back on track <laughs> yes um, <laughs> it's cool we can just cut track you know? well it's gonna like Okay, so might pretty much have a video clip of like just people throwing dice everywhere. Yeah. yeah, so pretty much there are two types, in my opinion, and I think most people. It's pretty simple to make a character and the thought ideas that come in. You have an existing idea and backstory for a character, uh, mm-hmm. or like say you've thought up an idea, a story for someone that doesn't really have a class, or you're emulating someone that you've seen in a movie, and then you put a class to that idea. You build around your idea, then you make someone you make this person and then you build their backstory you make their backstory based on the person there's kind of an in-between where say you pick a class make a backstory build the character around the backstory that one's also one that people do but more than often it's usually um wanting to play a class say oh wow rangers look cool i want to be a bowman boom make a backstory for my bowman oh bam i want to be assassin make a backstory for my assassin Stop that- being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, start being a dick and hate everything. Uh, which way, say, Hobo? 
do you make your characters? Um, for the longest period of time, it was I spent all because you remember me. I was a pain in the ass when I started. I just I couldn't choose. I, I was never very good at choosing what I wanted to play. That's why your first, one of your first characters in real life, you played two two classes: cleric, monk. Yeah, well, hey man, don't you diss in my hobo of Falagan or whatever it was called. It was basically a hobo of Falagan, whatever you pronounce it. It's a 3. The 5 wandering god. God, god of travel. Point. Yeah. And but um, as, as my career has gone on and I've been involved in a lot more roleplay heavy stuff, I generally tend to find myself being really frustrated because I can't make characters in the same sense that like, I don't make it in that choose what you want to play. Usually <laughs> I'll have a conceptual idea, I'll be sitting around, then it'll come to me and then I'll write it down and be like, I want to play this someday. <laughs> Okay, That's usually sweet. how it comes to me. I myself uh, do the yeah. I, I pick a class, and then I make the character. And I make if there's something called I think of maybe there's a flaw. I'll kind of put that into his things like maybe he's bad at perception, so I won't take perception even though it may be thematically right. But that's generally what I do. Denzel, um, I do a bit of both actually. Um, yeah. I sometimes choose the uh, class and then make a backstory around it. Many times I made a backstory and then put a class to it. Um, I find mainly most of mine in Pathfinder at the moment is I choose a god and kind of make the character from there. Yeah, gods. I actually think the Pathfinder gods themselves from the Glorian setting, the Inner Sea gods, are actually really well fleshed out, especially because of the book Inner Sea gods. That has a lot of flavour for making characters. Yeah, I guess mine, my, my choices really change on systems usually. If I'm in a more yeah. role-heavy play, um, play a game, I'll usually end up wanting more so to have a concept and then put the character idea around it. But I've been in so many different one-shots that for Pathfinder, I just stopped caring. So it was like, I'm just going to pick a class that I think is fun. It's usually a warlock, but <laughs> then yeah. I try and justify why I'm making packs with demons. Usually we skimmed over that fact. We kind of just like made it kind of a sorcerer thing. Well, it's because in three point five, you didn't have to. Ju- um, you didn't have to justify your parents could have made the pack. So that's usually all I did. It was like, yeah. no, my parents did. I don't know why. Don't care. Got I'm magic. an orphan. I'm an orphan. I'm a- <laughs> Welcome to three point five. Are you an orphan? Everyone here is orphans. <laughs> um, I guess we'll do a rundown of the basic classes that are in both editions. Um, so we have the barbarian, bard, cleric, druid. Fighter, monk, paladin, ranger, rogue, sorcerer, wizard. Warlock. And then... The, the, <laughs> Warlock's not a base class. Shh, it isn't. But it we're going to put... and fourth edition. It's going to slide that in. Yes. going to slide that in. <laughs> <laughs> so, these are the iconic ones. These classes... You think that there's a lot of choice, but there's not. <laughs> Sadly, you'd think there's a lot more classes than these. I think when we... We started actually making ridiculous things like full on randomizing. I think in three point five we had like forty nine classes on a chart. Or there, yeah. Oh, three three point five had way too many base classes, but that doesn't stop me from loving the dragon fire adept. Worship the dragon, bro. So, out of the base classes, uh, you guys got your favorites? Paladin for me. Mm, yourself. I wonder what I'm gonna say. Is it rogue? <laughs> If I'm not allowed to choose Warlock, then it is, in fact, Rogue. I need them skills, bro. I yeah. need them. I mean, it's not like it is my favourite, but I always see myself playing them, even though I don't play much, is Sorcerer. I don't know why. My, you like to blast those. Yes. Yeah, my true favourite class is Alchemist uh, from the Advanced Player's Guide in um, Pathfinder. Oh, yeah. Love the Alchemist. It can be a support role. It can be a damage role. Actually, it's both simultaneously. Um, but it's a different kind of damage, and it's a different kind of support. It's really good action economy because you can give people to cast spells, your potions and things like that. And I'm, I, will, I was about to ask, what's your favourite class overall, um, Hobo? But I know what it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone knows at this point that it, it's goddamn Warlocks. And I like them as well because they can be whatever you need to be. They can be that long-range blaster. They can be AoE with some of their stuff. And they can also... AoE later? AoE later, but they... They, they can a- control. The a- the, they have good control, but they also have some really decent like little buff spells even if they like even if the the pool of spells they do get is lower they get some good buff like dark ones are unlock and stuff like that yeah they buff themselves though they're, they're a selfish buffer you you can buff for other people though there is there are more useful but you're mostly there to control other people with like with your, with your tendrils and stuff like that your is it hands. the same for you when we're stretching out to the advanced classes do you still love the paladin so much is um, this the truth Denzel <laughs> tell us tell us your secrets well I'm actually uh, looking at I, I definitely love Paladins. Paladins has always been one of my favourite uh, classes. Um, you got yourself a Paladin? Got a lot better. In De- definitely got a lot better in Pathfinder. 
Yeah. Um, but I love to think I can all classes I've played or I've actually have in Pathfinder I like. Yeah. That's not the question we're asking. We're asking for if you don't James have. Or... Well, obviously it goes back to Paladin because you can't be like, oh, in the core I like Paladin no, no. everywhere. Pa- I like okay, everything. So if, 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 <laughs> That's if, what I mean. If, if I was to choose a class, it would be Paladin. Every exactly. Time. Yeah, so sure. Paladin. That's what I you mean, need to do, Denzel. Don't played, touch the question, yo. You already play a lot of Paladins in one of our longer campaigns. Played a Paladin. PFS main character, Paladin. <laughs> followed by, Paladin. Followed close by a clerical Lamashi. That's very different from a Paladin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you follow the backstory, they're related. So go figure. Oh, God damn it, man. <laughs> Just leave the Paladins behind. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, a big part of character creation is, of course, the classes. But then there's something even bigger that makes it, is the feats. Now, some people say that feats make the character, but some say that character needs the feats. What are your views on that? Which is uh, a thing called feat taxing, which basically means some characters need certain feats. If you're going that build, if you don't have that feat, your character won't work. I feel as if it heavily exists within... Pathfinder. It does still exist within 3.5. Yeah, it does. It's, but, wor- it's yeah. worse than 3.5 in some circumstances. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I feel like, especially with these um these notions for a lot of character ideas, like especially with crossbows, where they're, they're, ta- they're, ta- um, they're touted as like the simple man's weapon, but they're, unless you take a, a, an absorbent amount of feats, they will never be, uh, even with the absorbent amount of feats, they will never be anything close to a bow. Yeah. Mm. And that's the that's the worst example of feat taxing I've seen. In well, the other one would probably be grappling, where you can take a lot of grapple feats, but in the end, it's never going to be good. Funny enough, all for the fighter. Yeah, you'll note that. Sadly, a fighter is one of the weaker classes in this game in terms of the grand scope of things. But we'll be definitely talking about that later. What is your views on feat taxing, Denzel? Um, I can see that pretty much. Uh... I mean, there are some ways around it due to the archetypes of things, but uh, feat taxing is definitely present in, in the Yeah, game. what some people do is they give people more feats, like DMs. Do you think that's a wise decision? Or automatically giving people feats to do things? Like, say, if you are a two-handed fighter, they might automatically give you power attack because all two-handed fighters need power attack. That seems like a bad idea to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Um, there is an archetype I don't know if people uh, will know of, but the Zen Archer Monk. Um, mm. At higher levels, without having to go through the prerequisites, get uh, point blank shot. And yeah, like yeah. Things like Ranger and stuff automatically giving you feats is really good, but yeah. all the fighting styles, bow, two weapon, one handed, two handed, shield, requires thousands of feats to be any good. Which is kind of fine, but it gets to the point where you're only taking those feats if you're going a certain archetype. Why not just make a class called the Shield Fighter, the two-handed fighter? It's kind of like well, my my yeah. issue with my issue with that is that like, having played a couple of rangers, is that especially with like um with with like a two-handed weapon, they only have some of they don't have most of the core feats that you want. They have power attack, and I mean sometimes you do necessarily want cleave, but usually you find yourself. You're, you you get outshined incredibly easily by any mage with AOE, so you, most yeah. of the time I don't really feel that taking cleave is a necessary step. Yeah. But there's nothing we don't get. For, um, the two handed grip for a ranger out of memory doesn't get stuff like furious focus, which pre level six is basically the most amazing thing ever because you mm. only swing once anyway and take no negatives for it. It's still good later yeah. because every four levels it goes up. Um, I'm currently playing a character that's a two-handed fighting friggin' assassin, which is ridiculous, by the way. But it's literally the highest damage build that I can get out without wielding two weapons in two hands, which is one of my... I hate doing that, because you have to feet tax yourself so hard to be it good was, at it. It was worse yeah. than 3.5 for two-weapon fighting, because you oh. have to take ambidextrous and... Yeah, but ambidextrous fighting. existed. It's basically the same as double slice, but you can actually wield a weapon in your offhand, a large one. That feat's actually better... Okay. Then you guys to get monkey without grip. ambidextrous. It's actually worse. Yeah. There was also three point five had um, monkey grip, wasn't it? Oh god. Uh, so monkey grip is for when you want to allow. I was about to say monkey grip is a whole different thing. Yeah, that's okay. that, that's a min maxing feat and a half. <laughs> yeah, that was the one. I'm that... going to wield my gargantuan great sword. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought because I, I I just remembered it because I think you used it with a couple of two handed fighters where you would basically give them much larger weapons because you get the uh, the monkey grip feat. Oh, that's ambidexterity. Yeah. And that wasn't... Oh, if you're talking about wielding large weapons, that wasn't me. 
I would never do that because you take shocking minuses. Mm. Like negative six, I think, per hand or something stupid. Yeah. Which is bad. <laughs> Uh, another large po- uh, thing about character creation that really makes the character um, skills. We've already kind of covered this, but what is your views on some classes not being able to get some skills? Um, I just want to add this because, like, you, we, th- this is just quickly to the last part of the con- last conversation. Because um, you mentioned that you feel that feats, to a certain degree, make characters. But to a certain degree, I feel as if they don't because a lot of what happens is... Yeah, feat taxing. Not necessarily because no? of, because of feet taxing, you see a lot of what I would call standardization, which is most fighters usually end up getting this like if you're going a certain style, usually end up getting the same kind of feet. So I don't really necessarily think it's accurate to say that feats uniquely define a character. Sometimes it's only when you're yeah. on this fringe and you start paying the feet tax because most people are unwilling to do that that you start defining your character by it. Yeah. There are obviously some really obscure feats, but they're usually trap options. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll segue into that instead of skills, since we covered uh, skills in our last episode, all about D20. So if you're interested in that, just have a look there. But trap options are simply options that are bad. And if you take them, it's a trap. Yeah. That's it. Obviously, you can take them for flavor reasons, like things like blind fighting. It's not that great. If you're in a campaign where the DM's using mist constantly, sure, take blind fighting. Whatever. It basically means you can reroll conceal ability. But if your DM's not, then, you know, it's usually a trap. Um, hmm. There's other feats that can be traps. Extraneous ones like, I want to be a sailor. I'm pretty sure in Pathfinder there's a freaking feat to be a sailor. And it's bad, basically. You can use it as a profession sailor. <laughs> well, taking the skill profession sailor is pretty much a tra- It's flavor... But sometimes, like, using up a feat on things or taking an archetype that's way too specific, it can just be a trap. Yeah, that's... And your character is so suboptimal compared to someone doing exactly the same thing. Like, to me, fighters that aren't wielding a weapon in with both of their hands, I feel, are a trap most of the time because it's just so good to wield a weapon with both of your hands. Because with power attack and stuff, as you go up levels, every four levels, you're getting three plus damage. Why wouldn't you want that? It's really good. <laughs> mm. And high strength just stacks because of the 1.5 times to strength bonus thing. Yeah, like I mentioned in the last episode, I think I feel that like these sort of trap options can come in archetypes where yeah. Fighter has a couple of them where you can you can still do what the archetype is meant to be setting out for the niche, but you end up trading a lot of good stuff for a lot of bad stuff, and it's just like, why not just play a fighter and then just thematically continue to just play that way? Like, there are... One of the examples of, the good, of a good one, like of, of, a, of a non-trapped option, I believe is the two-handed fighter, which you mentioned. Yeah. but there are, Some of the options in there are traps, but you only go there for one thing. Maybe talk to DM and go, hey, there's something in the archer tree that I want, but a lot of the archer tree isn't very good. Can I please just take that option at that level? Most of the time, the DM is going to go, okay, as long as you're already not doing broken things. Because you're doing broken yeah. things, you go, hey, DM, mind if I... Uh, shove cocaine up my nose horribly while we're playing and they're usually going to say no hey DM mind if I munchkin out of everything and exploit the entire system yeah can I exploit the system please I just want to play punk can this be a homebrew and I get to be god because that's what I'd really like from a more role player's perspective though and playing characters that are more thematically about what you want what is your views on trap options well I mean trap options the way I look at it is if you've got the concept and you go, okay, why would this person have this feat? Does it, am I buying it because I know it's a standard or am I buying it because the character would have it? Like, yeah. You're not going to give um, a character who's building um, um, a quarter staff like power attack just because you know it's good it's good but if they've you know re- like are known for using strong blows with a bow or something it might work as a um as a thematical thing yeah well well you're wielding a quarter staff already so there's already a problem here yeah you're wielding a quarter staff which from a min max's point of view not very good no it's a crappy double weapon basically yep get a double sword spend that you know exotic weapon proficiency but if you if you if we're going back to the 
thematical thing of you've got a yeah. concept, so say you want to make Donatello from Ninja Turtles, but um, that's where I was going. Yeah! Sort of stuff. Uh, and, you know, you give a power attack, because why not? <laughs> Donatello was actually good at hitting things with the quarter stuff. So I like. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, that makes sense. But then there's also, I just thought of it really, um, this isn't really to do with trap options per se. It's when there are better ways for you to do what you're doing with your build and you yeah. sacrifice your story to do so. Say it's like, oh, I'm going to use an exotic weapon. Might as well go to half-elf instead of human because half-elves get the ability to take exotic weapon proficiency instead of their plus three to skill thing. Um, and then I get low-light vision, immunity, blah, blah, blah. Because half-elves are pretty much better than humans, except they don't get an extra feed. But if you're going to use that feed on something stupid, like exotic weapon proficiency, which you can get through other things, like you it. might as well do that. And it's like, if you're changing your character to half-elf, which I've done before, by the way, instead of being human like you originally planned, you're already sacrificing your build for min-maxing, which isn't necessarily bad, but it's just something I do a lot, and it's, you know, it's not... It kind of feels dirty when you do it. I don't know. From a perspective of someone who role-plays, usually I... Because I, I give... I. You know me, I, I play almost exclusively humans, so yeah. even in systems where humans are bad, I will usually not budge and I will continue to play a worse character because I just like yeah. playing humans. But I don't necessarily think there's anything intrinsically wrong because I think if the character idea still works but you're a different race, I don't see much harm in it. I, what I see a lot of harm in is when you start to compromise the core of your character because otherwise it's just terrible, I yeah. guess. Like, you know, because, again, like, if you wanted to go... Gra grappling's the thing I come back to the most, or, like, crossbow. It's like, why do any of these things? Because you're taxing yourself so um, so heavily. And from a perspective of, I guess, roleplay, it's like, but I want to be a crossbow dude. But you're not having to sacrifice so much of it that you instead decide, yeah. you know what, screw it, I'm just going to go with... In grappling's case, I'm probably just going to punch things. Or, in a, a crossbow's case, I'll just use the bow. Because the bow's so yeah. much better. Well, talk to your DM. Uh, you can go, hey, DM, how about there's, I'm pretty sure that in some book, it was, I think it was a Steam Bumble for 3.5, there was a feat that allowed you to get half dex damage and then a better feat, which you get at base tank bonus plus four, to get full dex damage with guns. Maybe go to your DM and say, hey, can you do that with crossbows? And having those feats allowed to get it to dex damage puts you above the bow. Because as soon as you can get dex damage, you're way better than the bow in every way. Because usually the bow character can't have 18 strength and 18 dexterity. Mm -hmm. would, like to, would like to point out there's actually a archetype for um, the gunslinger that uses a crossbow instead. Yes, uh, that is 100% true. And that you can actually technically now, the crossbow is not too bad. You, yeah, get yeah. A, you get a fully automatic crossbow. I'm pretty sure you still get gun training with crossbow. Maybe. I can't remember exactly what it trades out, but I know it's definitely like you use a crossbow as a bow. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just talking from my perspective, which yeah. was before these sort of things came yeah. out. And also yeah. during the 3.5 era when... Because... <laughs> I feel like the crossbow is an effective weapon, and it, it, it's meant to be seen as, a, like, I guess, a simpler tool than a um, than a bow. But I feel as if, in, in that regard, it feels way too gimped until you have until we have the introduction of like the the, yeah, the bow, yeah, and all that, yeah. Where, because yeah. otherwise, like, who I I don't think I've ever seen anyone take a, take a crossbow. You have. Ever. You I, made a character who dual wielded crossbows. Yeah, because I wanted to be an idiot, and it was funny. Yeah, um, it was terrible, but... Yeah, I'm, we weren't even using the proper rules, to be honest. If I remember correctly, we were doing it wrong. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Sounds like us. Yeah. So, yeah, we talk, had a lot of say on trap options. Well, it's a, it's a large issue. It's a why. really big issue if you don't want to take a certain character and make a certain character, because it's really bad. And because it's okay to want to be decent, like... It's really sad. Um, fifth edition rectifies this, but small characters that have martial ability, it is not very good. Yeah, there's. It, just... You have to pour so many resources to make a decent martial character. This is just not worth it. Yeah, and that sucks because the halfling. Sure, the halfling rogue can stealth really well, but they've got so many negatives to damage. Their situational ability needs to be higher for them to deal damage. But luckily. In friggin' 5th edition, you can be a halfling barbarian and it's actually not a terrible build. What's the thing? It's still... It's awesome. Well, it's still one of those things where it's suboptimal, but it's not... It's not that suboptimal. No, but let's think. Yeah. It, it, it's suboptimal, but it's not so suboptimal to the point where you're basically completely gimped like it was in these yeah. earlier editions. Because 
to do so in these earlier editions was just to be so much worse than anything else. Oh, but when it comes to a number crunching point, you're when you take halfling, say if you want to go a halfling fighter wielding a great sword or something, you are sacrificing about four to five damage to do so mm. when using a twenty bond by system, even more than, and you're maybe only losing your to hit by one because they get the plus one to hit or whatever. Mm. That's just not good. Yeah, that really sucks. Or because you want to be a quirky halfling fighter. Yeah. Oh, I know it's a halfling barbarian NPC that's renowned for uh, dying <laughs> level one characters. Hey, man, <laughs> Yolo Swaggins. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, he's uh, talking about a little uh, Pathfinder Society scenario where there's a little halfling barbarian that has killed many, many people. Yes. Has. Ah, uh, level many, ones in many... your nine hit points by <laughs> rolling a D10 plus three. <laughs> this, this is true. <laughs> yeah, literally. Kills parties. Kills people. I'm not surprised. Also three times crit. Yeah! You roll that crit and you're like, damn, son. Damn, son. So speaking of barbarians, we'll just get into it. Um, yep. We're pretty much just going to run down all of the classes, our thoughts on them. I'm going to be coming from a min-maxer's point of view, just pure talking about the min-maxing. So, barbarians. So we'll start off with... Oh, but what are your views on barbarians? Um, I don't really like barbarians. I feel like a lot of people play barbarians very wrong. They play them in a more... I guess like, I guess there's no real way to play a barbarian wrong, but... I yeah, feel like run at enemy scream. Yeah, but, hey! but I feel like a lot of people will still play them way more calculated, even when they're raging than... So oh, in, in... yeah, there's the metagame issue. I know uh, someone who's really great is Bluey. Bluey just plays... He attacks the nearest target. He swings every turn. He always rages all the time. Whether or not it's tactically advantageous, and that's cool. I like that. Yeah, that that that's that's a that's a much better way. But I I feel as if barbarians at some points perform the role of fighter, but better in some cases because they 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 tend to because of the fast movement they get in Pathfinder and three point five, they tend to um they tend to move a hell of a lot faster than the fighter can. And oh, the yeah. fighters not so much in Pathfinder because the Pathfinder you have armor training, so they're not as bogged down. But especially in three point five. The barbarian's yeah. moving a hell of a lot faster than your fighter is. Uh, it, it gets got... out of hand if the barbarian's wearing light armor yeah. and the fighter's wearing medium or heavy because you're moving twice as fast as the fighter and the barbarian's like, I charge 80 feet. And the fighter's like... <gasps> That's what I mean. Like, I feel like barbarians yeah. fulfill the role of a, fight, um, of a fighter better than a fighter does sometimes because... A wizard a... can perform the role of a fighter better than a fighter can. I know. <laughs> but, like, a barbarian usually has a lot of his stuff based in constitution, so even though he does have a low AC, he's still a good damage sponge. Yeah. But he also, with his rage, has the ability to deal out some really nasty damage, especially in the early levels of the game with the challenge runnings where the health isn't so high. There yeah. Are, I just watching barbarians with power attack that are raging is a terrifying thing, especially with the great sword. Yeah, in in Pathfinder, uh, just in Pathfinder, sorry, in general, it's easy, very easy to get a plus nine to damage. Uh, that's not even raging. When you're raging, plus twelve to damage at level one. Yeah. What the shit? That's what I mean. So I feel like in in some ways, even barbarians outperform their martial cousin, the fighter. What do you think, Denzel? Um, I definitely think that uh, barbarians are, are scary. I mean, people who think that the barbarian is a tank is probably wrong. <laughs> Not a tank. They, DPS. they are one of the best DPS classes in the in the game. Um, what I like to see is you know people trying to play with barbarians other than the ragey. I'm going to run and hit things. You know, I, I would like to see some variants on it. Um, yeah, I kind of prefer the but, ones where you're where you're kind of savage like a Viking, but you're not always raging. It's just one of those sort of like mm-hmm. whenever there's a good fight or a good battle, then yeah. you rage because otherwise. Yeah. that's why I like the scold. Yeah, scold. scolds. I want to play a scold in a long term Pathfinder campaign because I get that shit right. Oh yeah, you oh, would. The scold. Yeah, just manly. Scold, scolds are, are, are good. I also do like the uh, blood rager. Mm. Oh yeah, but that one's even more ridiculous than the barbarian. That is, that because uh, you get magic. <laughs> yeah, a level. You don't even need good magic. charisma either. Yeah, you don't. You, it's um. Oh. Yeah, the blood rage is is a very interesting one. It's like a barbarian, but better. But better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we should just keep it on uh, on um, standard class. But yeah. yeah, look, they're they're good, he- really heavy hitting class uh, when it comes yeah. to damage. Uh, but they also take a lot of damage in the Oh, of yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, let's look like this. Uh, from a min-max's point of view, I think is one of the best level one. 
If your campaign's only going to five, you want to deal damage. Barbarian. There is no other martial option. <clears throat> There's no other martial option. It is oh. so good. <laughs> uh, Paladin cannot have the damage output of a barbarian. You hit hard, you hit fast. Just saying. And you Until scream loud. Unless the campaign is all evil, then maybe. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, the, the most infamous <laughs> class, the bird. Oh, God. Um, all right. So I'm just going to start this one. I mean, I wouldn't call the a bard's hard to min-max. Um, <laughs> they can help party. Uh, you're not all about yourself. I mean, really, when you're min-maxing a bard, you're min-maxing either a fighter or a caster. Um, I mean, Archibald's probably the best way that you can go in Pathfinder, which is basically having a decent dex, decent charisma. You buff your allies and things like that. Um, you don't need 20 ch- charisma as a bard. I never want to see that on a bard. There's no reason. Everyone that does that, don't. Just straight out. in dex. It's not good to have 20 charisma as a bard. It hurts you too much. Other casters, except for Cleric, you 100% have to have 20 or an 18. But bards can get with a 16 or a 14. Alright, Denzel, what do you like about bards and what do you hate about bards? Uh, well, what I like about them is they are actually a very versatile class. I mean, yeah. You, the versatility is their strong point. Um, basically, they can be your buffer, they can debuff, they can also heal, which is yeah. great. So, you know, your heal goes down, your bard can get them back up. Um, the bard that I play is uh, Archer bard but she's also got um like sleep charm person kill out wounds and yes yeah. she, she, she has she's a very support character and stays back and shoots with a bow um yeah but pretty much that's that's it the thing i also love about bard is the fact that they get quick proficiency so you you can make the disarm or trip bard as mm. a, that, that helps a lot and this is this is where I shit on bards because I've only ever dealt with them in the three point five system, and they were terrible. They were jacked. oh, they didn't get any better in Pathfinder. Oh, yeah, they, they, were, they were the characters that had the least. Actually, because they got rid of bardic knowledge in some way, they got worse. Bardic knowledge was good. It was literally a set DC. If you got over uh, twenty, you got to know all this crap. But they changed it now. They just yeah. get to have, uh, um, add half their not in Pathfinder, half their um, level to knowledge checks. And make all the knowledge checks on train. Still good, but not as good as bard knowledge. Yeah, like, I will admit, I, I want to one day play a bard, mysterious stranger, gunslinger, and pathfinder. Yeah. But at the same time, I you, you mentioned versatility, but for me, a lot of what I've been dealing with bards is that they have, they have been a right amount of small versatility, but for the most part... Especially with the loss of bardic knowledge, the jack of all trades not really good at any of them. And the amount of times I've played with a friend who's played a bard and got frustrated that his character doesn't really do anything, you're is, playing a bard is is a, is a lot. And I'm also not a fan of this sort of sneaking very quietly as I play music. Uh, every single time, if I'm ever going to play a bard or ever see a bard, perform oratory is the way to go. Oh, yeah. That's the only way you're ever going to inspire anyone, in my opinion, is either singing or, you know, speeches. Because that's how they, bards really did it. Which actually brings me to one of my favorite things. There is a bard archetype, I believe, for Pathfinder, which is all about um, people who inspire rebellions. I can't remember the start. I think it's like, um, it starts with a D. Demigod. Yeah, those. I do like those. Those are, that's a really cool sort of thematic one if you're running a campaign Mm. where you have to guess... We are trying to rally people towards the cause because that's what the entire class is about. Yeah. And while it's not, a f- it's still not fantastic. I just like it thematically. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably cool. the only part of bards I really like. Um, for me also, like my bard that I actually have is uh, her background story. She's a dice dancer, and it kind of works. Yeah, no, it, you can definitely yeah. make bards work, but I just yeah. feel as if they it, make really good backstories. They do. No, no, bards always make good backstories, but I just never feel as if like mechanically they have a very strong place in the lineup. Like, if you have... A, they fit. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I feel like if you're having a core team and you only have a small amount of people, you don't want a bard. What you want is probably more of a dedicated healer or more of a dedicated fighter in that regard. The, but the, if you have, if you already have four dudes, chuck a bard in. The, the, thing, the thing about the bard also is uh, the amount of skills they get. That's the... Six plus int modifier is pretty good. It's pretty And they're way... Oh, actually... Bards make better rogues than rogues. Yeah. Because there's bard archetypes where you can just get all the rogue abilities apart from sneak attack. 
Mm-hmm. And to be honest, having spells and inspiring your team is way better than sneak attack. Yep. That is true. It, it's also, if you've got, you know, if you've got a heavy combat uh, party, take a bard to buff you and also for the skill monkey. Yep. Yeah. Also on bards, uh, they have problems with multiple ability scores. You need all your scores good and you do not want to have many negatives. I see people taking or build saying negative wisdom, but I do not want to have seven wisdom. That's stupid. That's bad. Um, I but believe. yeah, that's a problem with bars. But then again, their ability scores don't need to be too high either because you can just buff your party. They're, they're the average man. Yeah. They just need to be average, not fantastic at everything. Uh, next. Terrible at everything. Um, any more? Sorry? Anything no, on bars? Um, no, um, that's nah, it. I'm, I'm done with my hating on bars. We've got the C, the L, the E, R, a C. Uh, it's cleric. It's, a, it's cleric. The infamous. <laughs> the healer. Born. No, they're not. I'm just going to tell you guys right now, he, clerics are not healers. They are, they are full magic casters that have a really good opportunities for backstories based on gods. They're not just healers. And I really hate the stigma around them just being healers. Sure, they have channel energy. Sure, they can spontaneously cast cure light. But if you're just building a cleric just to be able to heal in your group, you're going to be bored. It's boring. Really no, no one wants to play Healbot 5000. No one. You can make Healbot 5000. Actually, the Oracle Life Oracle makes Life it pretty Oracle heal. Is, is yeah, better. really good Healbot 5000. But how boring is it to play? Eh, boring. <laughs> yeah, it's boring. Yeah. <laughs> but you help your party do everything that you're not doing. It's boring. Um, clerics make really good debuffers, really good buffers, and decent damage, and decent damage soak. Yeah. They're good at everything. They are really... The good at everything. Mm-hmm. Jack of all trades. They're the jack of all trades. Their skills suck though. Yeah. Really big problem with Yeah, them. the problem yeah. is they're not the jack of skills. Um, what are your views on them? The hobo? I think I'm so torn because I don't really like worshipping gods in e-campaign. I don't like feeling restricted by, by gods, which is the... You can worship an ideal, remember that. That That is that is true, but I, I wasn't sure if that was the thing you could do back in um, 3.5. Not in 3.5, but you can in Pathfinder. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, but most I, DMs would re- view you as min-maxing when you do that. Because you're like, oh, you just want fire in this domain, don't you? You just want healing in this domain. For me, it's because I don't like being tethered to a god, and I don't like having the potential for my powers to be taken away because of that, and like following ideas more, because I don't necessarily uh, like if your alignment change, they still, it's still one. Yeah, no, but I, I, I'd, I'd like, I'd like to fall in rather with, um, with an ideal that I yeah. can personally fall and believe in because I don't necessarily like the idea of believing in greater deities' knowledge, even if these deities do exist. I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't sit well with me. Also, you can respect the deity more. No, no, you don't yeah. have to be like a pious follower per se. Yeah. Also, the god could have gifted you, and you don't want that gift. Yeah, you can create some really interesting roleplay segments for it, but honestly, I think I actually prefer clerics to fighters in, in the many degrees that, while they're not necessarily the same, clerics perform a really awesome role, and I don't know, just the idea of a cleric walking around with a mace just smacking dudes around, that's how I view it, I don't... I like gore of great sword might. Well, that's the thing, I don't, I don't really view clerics as so much as a healer as I am, um, as I... Because they, they, do, they do heal, that's the thing. Usually yeah. a good healer will be there to be back their party up, but a lot of what I see it as is debuffing, and then I'm going to get in there, I'm going to smack it in the face with my mace, and I'm going to be another yeah. body. Well, debuffer is the negative energy cleric, um, and the evil cleric, because all the spells push towards that more. Um, well, even yeah. with the buffing cleric, you still, you buff, then you get in, and you, and you join the um, you join them in the fray, you don't <laughs> sit back, and you wail on a dude to help yeah, them. Yeah, it's help sweet. Them it's yeah. really good. Clerics and then are, when shit goes bad, channel the energy. Yeah, basically, then when shit starts going wrong, burst of energy. Also, <laughs> clerics make the best goddamn undead killers, I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright, Denzel, you got some experience with the <laughs> well, uh, cleric. I'm, I'm running two clerics at the moment. Oh, God. God. Two? Uh, yeah, in a um, uh, custom campaign... Cleric of uh, Serial. Got a horseman of war. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Actually, I'm playing with that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, basically, I've got my Madness Cleric. Um, and yes. that was... That was Already made. heard of that one? We heard of that one. Um, very debuffy. Um, she's more yeah. of a she's caster a... rather than a uh, full-on melee attacker, even though she has a falchion. Um, and then... Hey, man. Hey? Nothing bad about the falchions. I rock the falchion. Oh, yeah. I love the falchion. The falchion <laughs> is uh, actually technically the best martial weapon you can get if you can it, but... Gotta go fast, man. Fashions are brilliant. Yeah. Um, and then I've also got my uh, cleric of serial horseman of war, um, which is more of a battle cleric. You are a pious man. <laughs> What's your favorite class? Paladins. 
What are you playing? A couple of paladins and clerics. Dice. You are a very pious <laughs> Clerics are very evil, though. <laughs> Still. <laughs> it's it's because when I, like, I got the book, um, Inner Sea Gods, and I went, oh, I'm just going to flick through this. Five o'clock in the morning, I'm still up reading it, and I had work in two hours. These gods are <laughs> radical! <laughs> oh, it, it just tells you, the Inner Sea Gods book allows you to worship gods and not be a cleric or a paladin. Yes. This is good, because I don't want to have to always play a cleric or a paladin. Yeah. But the the book just was good with ideas, and I, I just absorbed that. And... Yeah, me too. I've read the whole thing. <laughs> God, I'm, the, I'm the one left out here, Jesus. Well, you don't play Pathfinder as much as we do. No, but I you're did, not in society plays. So. I did spend a lot of time playing in a very long winded, sorry, a long, long running uh, Pathfinder campaign. So I did end up having a look over many of my options and a lot um, over yeah. a lot of the books. I just never, I just never focused a lot because I never, I didn't think there was anything interesting about the gods, so I never ended up reading Inner Sea. Yeah. So. Yeah. It it's a good book, especially if you want to like you know learn more about the backstory of each of the gods and how they came to be. It definitely sounds like it would enlighten me a bit more to the yeah. scenario and perhaps yeah. ease off mm. my dislike of the gods in general. Yeah, I think fifth edition will rectify that though with their clerics. They're spicy, spicy uh, mid boy. I love them yeah. the because they they're they, awesome. They really change when you choose to be like a a. <laughs> A uh, trickery cleric, so like a you can be like a thief cleric and stuff like that. Mm. Um, another thing with cleric is they also suffer from multiple ability score deficiency. Yeah, um, wisdom and charisma. big time. Um, but if you play a more casty cleric, you can dump strength and stuff because the debuff of cleric doesn't need strength. Uh, you don't want to dump charisma. You don't want to dump dex. You don't want to dump con. You don't want to dump anything. Uh, the fighty cleric can dump dex though, um, because you just you wear heavy armor. armor. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean. Other than that, uh, Cleric also has the most trap options of any character. There are some bad domains. Oh, then yeah. there's amazing domains. Worship Desna. Do it. Like, seriously, it's amazing. Just Desna has some of the best domains. Yeah, she has a domain that just gives you plus 10 movement speed. And, as a swift action, ignore diff- you get freedom of movement for one round. And oh. you can do this 3 plus wisdom modifier times per day. And you get 10 more movement speed. I'm so for That's, that's a domain. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, that's Clerics. And then there's Druids. Uh, once again, I have a fair amount of say about these guys. Um, you, you don't. I don't like people who go druids for animal companions. There's plenty of other ways to get it. The, yeah, but it's a worse one. I know. The druid, in my opinion, is a caster that is centered around nature. There are a lot of role playing things you can do with the druid as well, but you just there's no reason to go druid specifically for the animal companion because the animal companion isn't that good especially when there's things like um, summoners running around in Pathfinder <laughs> when- <laughs> summoners summoners are the most <laughs> horrible despicable pieces of shit on earth I'm not going to talk much about them because I hate them so much synchro summoners synthesis synthesis they're summoners. dirty man but yeah um, druids are an interesting one they've never appealed to me I'm pretty sure they don't appeal to Denzel do you even like them? I like the idea of nature shamans, but sadly, I've been unfortunate enough that most of the druids I've seen to run into in Pathfinder campaigns usually just end up to be militant dicks. Yeah. So I don't like druids that yeah. much. I don't like them mechanically. I, yeah, I like the idea of a shaman, but none of them really, most of them just play as militants. Yeah. And I don't like that. Druids are actually the true jack of all trades, by the way. They're good mm-hmm. at everything. Mm-hmm. They've even got good skills. They have good skills. They have a creature that can fight for them even though they don't have good strength. And even if they have good strength, they can transform. They can be decent at casting. They're amazing. What are your views on them, Dad? Um, I don't really play them, but I've, I've seen them. Yeah. I just I just find play, playing a droid is like you controlling. Most of the time, I, all the droids I see are uh, human, uh, like animal companion droids. So it's always, okay, so now I've got to take care of two creatures. And it's just, I don't want to know really. Yeah. Um, yeah. I uh, just just roleplay wise, I find a yeah. lot of druids end up being like we have to do it the nature way or we do it the um no way, and then that yeah, way I actually, my way or the highway. I actually hate druids more than I hate paladins because I feel like some paladins can be reasoned with, whereas I feel like a lot of druids are just all like if it's about nature and it's not supportive of it, I don't want to hear no shit out of you. Mate, I'm just gonna play a blight druid and then you like that one. Yep. <laughs> No, you won't. No. <laughs> I'll be um, like, why are you not eating rotten food? <laughs> Goddamn bloat mage. <laughs> Anything else on the subject of druids, guys? No. Just no. hatred. Pure hatred. No. The, the, the I thing, do like the druid. The, I think, the, the druid has its... its like I've seen what druids are supposed to be. I just 
never seems to come across as what it's they It's not intended. super exciting. No. Well, just, this no. is the thing, like, I, I, I know druids are good, and I know they can be good. It's just my experiences with them have all, for the most part, been rather negative, and I, it's not... Yeah. It's just not been fun, like, because, again, I like, I like shamans, and I think if you made a shaman druid, it would be really cool, and if you were, for the most part, rather about your own... You can just go a shaman voice. now in Pathfinder. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's ranger, better than a druid. Ranger, ranger yeah, so I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd much rather just go Actually, shaman uh, in Pathfinder. Nature Oracle is uh, pretty cool, too. Yeah, that's the thing. So, there are things I would much rather play than a druid, basically. They're not bad, they're not a bad class, they do provide a very good jack-of-all-trades... But I don't like them. Just I just yeah yeah. The, the problem I have is uh, the one rule where they can't take any metal oh, weapons. God. That puts so much uh, limiting on. I do what I do. I just say you can have bone. It's the same as the metal. Just means you can't pick up stuff from the ground. Part of me doesn't really understand that, considering the metals were on the yeah. ores. because the ores were originally from the ground. They're just more refined. I don't understand what's necessarily so bad about it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's just weird. I just. Because like, again, like what, just looking at the, like the process, it's not necessarily like, as if they're adding anything. They're just melting down the ore, and then they're just I yeah. they're hammering out the impurities, and then just using the purity of the ore. If that brings that be better. That brings about a whole other argument of basically talking about what is natural. But we're yeah, not we're not, talk about that. We have today. to move on. This, there this are more is, glasses. Is, there's a lot. There's fighter. I'm just going to say a few words on fighter. That's about it. Dipping for fighter, good. Going to 20 for fighter, why? Why aren't you playing a barbarian? (laughs) (laughs) That's it. Like, okay, maybe the, funnily enough, the fighter is better than the ranger at shooting a bow because of the weapon master. I think in my opinion. That's it. That's all I have to say on fighters. You guys pick it up. (laughs) Denzel, you go first. I I have to formulate my thoughts a bit more. (laughs) Oh, well, fighters is pretty much very good for someone who's very new to the game. Yeah, it's good for new people. It's it's like your intro class. Yeah. Okay, what do you like doing? I like swinging a sword. All right, here's a fighter. You can learn almost all the mechanics of hand-to-hand combat with a fighter. I think I'd rather hand a barbarian to a new person than I would a fighter. No, uh, barbarian, they still need to track things. Track, rage, like, fighter. Oh, no, trust me, dude. I've given barbarians to newer people and they always forget to track their rage. And I... Just play fighter. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, it, it's also easy. they get hit easily. Mm-hmm. When it, when a barbarian's raging, most of the time they won't have the highest armor class, so they'll be down to like 15, 14, 16. Yeah. While Fair a enough. fighter, you can get a shield, decent armor, level one, you can get around nineteen to twenty armor class very easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what was it? Just if you especially for the extra feet, dodge. Then you have chainmail, and then you have a shield. Yeah. Yep. And, long and you some decks. Yeah, and some decks, and you usually Shit, you get twenty one, twenty two very easily. Yep. Yep. It's shield focus. You could take you. Can, oh, you can be a wall of AC with a fighter. The, the I think it's the character that does it the best. Yeah, he's, but a wall of AC is not the best idea. Well, it doesn't kind of protect against the magic and the save well, or die. Also, late game monsters plus to hits just is exponential. Like um, most monsters plus to hits eventually hit like plus twenty very quickly. Yeah, like a challenge running nine or a challenge running eight creature can easily have a plus twenty to hit. Already, all your AC is irrelevant. Gone. You don't yeah. need it anymore. Everyone's a mage now. Everyone just needs health. Yup. That's um, why con is usually more important than dexterity. Yeah. You got anything you want to say, Denzel? Um, basically, they're great if you need um, like a four and a health boost as well yeah. um, as a, in your dip. Um, basically, they're really good to dip. Actually, they are. I don't pretty, mind the dip. Pretty, no, they're good dips. Low level campaigns actually fighters are fine. High level campaigns, like at the start, they're pretty good. Barbarian overtakes them, but the fight is all round. That's fine. But then as soon as you hit like eight to ten, you just, oh, I'm irrelevant now. I'm basically being buffed. All I'm doing is wearing magic items and being buffed by my, by my wizard. I'm basically a stick. You're a body, basically. You're, yeah. just, you're just a body to be there. Basic, basically also the fact full base stack. Yeah. Oh, full base stack is great. But now they're bringing out classes like Slayer and things like that. And it's just so much better. Well, with my um, cleric... Serial the war cleric. Um, basically, I needed to take one level in um, in fighter just to get a the armor and the base attack bonus. So when I got to level seven, I could take the field I wanted. No, that's fair enough. Um, do you have anything more to say, or can I begin? Yeah, go for it. Um, I like fighters, but I also recognize that they're 
they're not the best. I like fighters because I feel like in the early levels they have a good AC most of the time with a good decent attack and some and a, a decent amount of health die. In a lot of the campaigns, they're they're definitely a good choice. I also like fighters because they're one of the better ones you can use for maneuvers like disarming and tripping. I feel, but again, we've already discussed previously how it's good for early game. That stuff falls off later on when the CMD becomes way too high and your tripping and your disarming becomes kind of useless against anyone. Depends who... on the type of campaign. If you're doing a heavy human campaign, maneuvers are awesome. Yeah, but usually it doesn't end up like that. Usually, even when human campaigns, you end up with, let's face it, even gods, and then it becomes a case of or yeah. like extra dimensional beings, and then it becomes a case of tripping and in my settings actually disarming and tripping is actually a lot better because I do heavy human yeah. and humanoid based campaigns because I find them more interesting than dinosaurs and yeah. dragons I, and stuff I do like that I have to yeah. admit I'm heavily biased against um, on that but I just feel like in the standard setting or in society play they don't do yeah. in, in the early they do they do pretty well but later there becomes an issue most certainly okay. here we go guys now here's a class that reads trap monk Mm. everyone wants to play the fist fighter that's fine I wanted to play the fist fighter my first character was a fist fighter I still want to play fist fighters but everyone wants to play fist fighters but monks are bad <laughs> play brawler play the new class brawler from the advanced class guide monks as a whole I think the only viable build is zen archer oh yeah zen archers are crazy yeah. like okay so basically the thing with the monk is you don't want armor so you need lots of ability scores you need both wisdom and dexterity Instead of just naming Dex, because you get Wisdom to Dex as well. This is kind of cool. It makes them a little bit better than better against mages and stuff. In general, monks were kind of meant to be this anti-mage kind of character. You don't get spell resistance to level... Okay, I'm not too sure, but I think it's about 10 plus. Way too long before you become any good. Sure, you're, you can still do damage, but I feel that there's other classes that do this better. Just do this a lot better. Because monks don't get full base attack bonus... When they full attack, they do. It's just... Oh, it's just bad. It's just not very good. They're also way too stat dependent. So they... stat dependent. You need strength, con, dex, wisdom. And by the way, you don't want to lower any of these. Yeah, you need them all to be really... Dump in. Dump charisma. Go ahead. Because you actually get a decent amount of skills in with monk. Um, and also, full, uh, full everything saves is pretty good. But just... Everything else. Well, that's about the it. thing. Like in in a points by system or like Pathfinder Society, you're not going to get a fantastic monk because yes. you have to spread everything out way too much. In a campaign where you can roll your stats, if you can roll two 18s and the rest of your stats are fourteen, you're, you're on the right track. Yeah, you're 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 you're, you're golden, but you can't do that for yeah. any point when you by have system. Like like a forty point by play a monk. Oh yeah, <laughs> but when you don't, <laughs> yeah, I when would you suggest don't, it. I no no because no. you want eighteen strength, you want eighteen dex, you want eighteen wisdom. Like you want all of that high because your key is based based off of your wisdom and yeah. all this kind of stuff. And of course, you need more wisdom because you know your wisdom also with your key. You also goes towards your dex. But oh, sorry, your arm, your AC. But you also need good yeah. dex because most of the time. Yeah. But you also need good strength because you're punching unless you take weapon finesse. But then of course that cuts to the feet. Then you can get no damage. damage. Mind you, Mark's get shitloads of feats. Yeah. They get about the same as much as fighters on tool level 4. But yeah, it you you requires a lot and as much as I love it, I was playing, playing Brawler is just way easier and Brawler yeah. gets some really good maneuvers out of memory. Well, they get the ability to get any feat for a minute. Do Yeah, that's amazing. Do Brawlers get monk weapon efficiency? No, but they can punch with their fists. So Denzel, you are the uh, role player and monks are dripping with flavor. They, they are. Um, now... The monk I ended up choosing was a Zen Archer monk, um, but the way I built the monk was more based on his backstory than, than anything. He's more of a tea merchant, so all his skills and... Yeah. Hello, General Arrow. I know, General Arrow. No. Kind of based on General Arrow. Also, the monk has a charisma bonus. Monks with charisma well, bonus. Yeah, you don't... Well, he was... <laughs> the, like, I said, like I said in the backstory, his, his worship's uh, the god Abadar, the god of commerce, so... The ability. I'll admit, I have worshipped Abadar a few times, and and it seems and it seems to work. Um, so the reason I built the character was more on okay, I wanted to make a tea merchant, and I just went well, if he's a tea merchant, he'll probably be from Sh- Shanja and more or less likely a monk. The only viable option really was a uh, Zen archer monk at the time. Yeah. <laughs> what I went through, I went yeah, I can't be bothered buying all these stats for him. Um, Honestly, Zen archers I think are one of the better monk um, classes it to is. take anyway. I mean, it, it, like, it's, it's, it's I think one of the top. 
um, range damage classes. Yeah, I've actually... Um, that's it's the highest damage you can the get. The long-running campaign that I was in, the um, I actually want to play a Zen Mom, Zen Archer from, um, at one point, and he's just like, I don't like, I don't, no one can play a Zen Archer. He bans Zen Archers because he believes it to be the most high DPS class you can get. Knife Rogues. Uh, Ninja is the highest, but um, the situation ability to be able to go off with the Ninja is crazy. Yeah. But um, I definitely do. I definitely do. I have played as an archer before, and I really, I definitely do like it. It is, it is fantastic. Also, oh, like you guys talking about your, um, your gods. I just remember the only god I think I've only um I've ever worshipped, and that was a Litamara. How scummy do I seem now? What character worshipped the Litamara? Could have been in my campaigns. Yeah. I think it was in one of your campaigns. Like I've you, like... Hu- your your character literally hung out with the Litamara. We probably shouldn't talk about that, except in a different story time, because that's way too confusing to explain to people. Yeah, yeah. not even going to bother. Um, next is uh, Paladins. Um, yes. You can talk about that, Denzel, because you're such a fanboy of Paladins. <laughs> Go on, you pious Talk paladin. about the Paladin, man. Perry Jeans. All right, the Paladin. Um, basically, in 3.5, um, they were just a lawful good fighter, in my opinion. Um, they were a spez movie. Lawful good fighters without feats and with situational abilities that yeah. sucked. There's, but still, <laughs> yeah. I, I still I enjoyed playing them. Um, they were just a, a class that you know they were good, and the way to play lawful good, I think. It I started <laughs> the uh, why people hated lawful good, lawful stupid. Yeah, is one lawful stupid like lawful stupid, but the way I played it, I actually tried to play it lawful. Good. Yeah, you you're probably one of the best people I've seen play Paladin. Come like forth, that. evil doer, so I may smite thee with my mighty blade. My mighty blade, Sima. Um, Game is Darkness Rising references for you guys, but uh, definitely, um, definitely with uh, with Pathfinder, um, they have definitely come into their own. Oh, know. they are the best tanks in the game. <laughs> exactly, they're, they're, they're tank- fantastic tanks. They're, they heal themselves. They're they're fra- fantastic <laughs> while attacking. <laughs> um, basically, I, I think I've said it before. Um, if you want to kill a paladin, do a level one because it gets exponentially harder. Yeah, level, level two, charisma to rule saves. Oh, that's a bit spicy. Level three, immune to everything. Immune to, immune to disease. I'm immune to everything now. <laughs> I'm immune to disease. Welcome to 20 And magical more. diseases. Yep. It's like when when the DM goes, oh, I'm going to send a right and throw up and you guys are going to fail your saves and you're a paladin. Fuck. Damn it, man. And then you can smite the, the evil... Like, Werewolf, throat. yeah. And yeah. do extra damage. And go through its DR. Mm-hmm. Uh, that makes smite a lot better. And then, and then with level five, uh, before you could only take the uh, divine bond with an animal, now it can make a divine spirit with your blade. Excuse me. And the why? bond is a lot better as well. Yeah, it's a, so much because better. because it scales uh, with level. Mm-hmm. Baby, my holy lance. Oh yeah. yeah Gonna shake me just, some evil doers with that. Just, just think of <laughs> holy great talk. Oh, see yeah. how ridiculous great sword paladins are usually the way to go and, actually and, great sword anything is usually the way see, to go and see how you're a martial person gets. why aren't you using a great sword what are you you're, you have a shield which is fine shields yeah. are fine shields you, are... Could be, you could be a two weapon shield fighter the best two weapon fighter I've uh, actually my paladin walks around with a um, steel shield and a warmer I'm still a sucker that's person. a flavorful paladin <laughs> flavor <laughs> I think that's all we were. I mean, I've actually played Paladins before. I had a b- bastard sword. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, literally every single time I have a shield and a weapon, it's always a bastard sword. Because I cannot help myself. Yeah. What's well, a D10 weapon? I yeah. actually really enjoy playing a Paladin, which is weird because I'm usually playing chaotic neutral assholes. Um, but Paladins can be a lot of fun. And actually in 5th edition, you know, once again, plugging it again, you don't have to be awful good. You could technically be a chaotic neutral paladin as long as you adhere to your code. None of the codes are chaotic neutral, though, so you can't. But <laughs> you have to adhere to your code, not your alignment, which I really enjoy because it, you can be evil. Vengeance, mm. Vengeance paladin adheres to more of a paladin of wrath. This, yeah, yeah. You don't have to be evil, but you can say good instead of evil when you look at the Vengeance Paladin. Yeah. Mm. Um, what have we got next on the list? Uh, Ranger. Here's another one that I have. Uh, it's, a, it's a trap. Ranger. Um, I don't like it. The big problem with the Ranger is I feel at level <coughs> 5. Well, whenever you get your Animal Companion, level 4 or 5, whatever. I don't think you should take the Animal Companion, and the other thing is bad anyway. Yeah. I don't like who Rangers have spells also, especially in Pathfinder. I, I feel in uh, the new D&D definitely feels right because you get them at level 2. 
But I feel, why not just make a survival dude that uses weapons but goes for more of a light armor instead of a fighter? <laughs> why do we have to bother with this magic stuff? I guess it's something that was a trope that was put in early and it just stayed. But I don't like it. I do like its other abilities, though. Being able to get um, two weapon fighting without the dexterity requirement. I got to talk about rangers finally. Um, yeah, it's weird because I did um, the character I had in the long running campaign was a uh, half fighter, half um, half ranger. Oh, cool! And I elected because um, thematically for the backstory, I chose to go with a um, with an archetype that I actually really like for ranger. Hunter? Well, no, skirmisher. Skirmish Skirmish is the one that gets abilities, right? Skirmish is the one that gets abilities. Yeah, I like them. Yeah, and some of those abilities are really cool. Like if uh, if someone's adjacent to you, like when your eyes are adjacent to you, get hit, you can make an immediate action to hit um to hit the person who's attacking. Yeah, this and there's some really some like some of it's a bit iffy, but there is some really cool stuff, and I actually prefer that sort of non magical. I think that should have been the base ranger. Yeah, I I definitely think so too. But I I do feel like rangers can also kind of. Full flat. I do, I actually like what they've done with them more in fifth edition because I feel like a lot yeah. of what um, a lot of what rangers have now, even with like favored terrain and favored enemy, it's kind of like favored enemy. What do you not want to see in this campaign? Okay, choose that. So then the DM never puts them in. Mm. Oh yeah, like and most of the time people pick human, uh, undead, Dead dragons. I've seen you just say dragons. Dragons are flavorful. It's not good, though. I usually just choose human because I'm usually playing humans, and for the most part, humans are fairly f- proficient at killing um, each other. I, I haven't played many, but I generally pick beasts. You verse animals all the time. And Dude. animals, at least in mine, I still have them around all the time. Yeah. They're always going to be a thing. So early levels, it's great to have that. Yeah. I'd say that range is actually good early levels. It's yeah, really no, good I, um, one yeah. of my favorite characters actually is a um, was a ranger I made. Although we're probably going way too far in like the edge territory for that because I wanted to play a very non-standard character. So I chose to play a ranger who was a um, was a mutant, and his backstory had his vocal cords slashed. So we couldn't Jesus, basically that's a bit brutal. So that he couldn't um, <laughs> so he couldn't testify to a crime. Basically, okay, um, then. yeah, and so it was really interesting the sort of dynamic of playing a character because you don't realize how um, how much of a pain in the ass it is because like when you find something, it's just like you can't call out to the others. I had to find all these alternative methods yeah. of trying to communicate to these people who were searching around. That's cool. and of course one of them was a little um was a little chalkboard that I had where I'd write things on <laughs> there, but like. It was really flavorful, and I really um and I really enjoyed it. And it was so interesting having to try and communicate to um, because my character uh, I made him purposely look uh, look and appear intimidating because the guy was like six foot three or something like Jesus, that. He was yeah. no, he wasn't six foot three. He was like six foot five. He was huge, but like he couldn't speak a word. And like the um the best part about it was for me was that I actually chose to make the character a, a rather gentle person. So when I fought creatures and beasts, if I wasn't going to eat it, I would only ever do non lethal damage to it, and then I would basically let it go. Okay, that's good. yeah. So I that's what I mean. I re- I have spent a lot of time looking at rangers, and while I don't necessarily like how they mechanically work in some senses, they're thematically pretty cool. They're thematically you can do some really cool things with them, and that's one of my favorite characters I've ever um, I've ever played, besides from my warlocks. <laughs> oh. uh, next we have the rogue. Mm. Another trap. Oh, you notice everything's a trap. Yeah, no magic. By the way, just gonna point that out. Um, the rogue is cool. Uh, but a lot of people go into it thinking that they can be the average dexterous guy that uses finesse to be able to cut people, hiding behind people in fights, and jumping out. But you just can't do that with the rules. They're, so a lot of the time, rogues fall flat. They're not World of Warcraft rogues. Yeah. Everyone, Getting flanking is a pain. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's also easier than most people think because a lot of people that I play with at least don't have the biggest grasp on the system. And as a DM, I don't have to tell people how to play their characters. Yeah. You guys are fine, but you guys don't really... Well, I haven't played it with you for a while, actually. But I'm sorry, babe. It's all right, man. We've been playing Pathfinder for a while. We've been playing Shadowrun, which is better for the most oh, part. Don't... Harsh words. Harsh, Harsh words. words, indeed. It depends how I feel. Yeah, it depends <laughs> how I feel at the time. It's, I'm, I'm pretty into part, uh, D&D and Pathfinder at the moment, Just so I'd say for now it's better. Yeah. Anyway, so rogues... Just rogues. They're not very good. I know. They're squishy. They have heaps of skills. That's cool. Yeah, skills I know. Skills are cool. They Stop ragging on me for my love of skills, man. The skills, no. I'm, I'm not ragging on you, actually. Skills are very important. <laughs> and when you play casters like Sorcerer and Cleric and Fighter, they only get 2% mod. Well, actually, Fighter's not too bad because you don't need skills to be a fighter. Yeah. But when you play things like Cleric and Sorcerer, which only get 2% mod, and you don't have Intelligence as your main scores, 
you and the list has some cool cool yeah. skills on it you're like god damn it huh, can't take any of these and then of course there's me which is just like i'm playing a rogue excuse me why i put my 18 in my intelligence and then choose human so that i can get more skills then i can have a total <laughs> of 13 skills and it's still not enough for me <laughs> i'm serious i have a seriously <laughs> crippling addiction to skills because i feel like i need to because i because I, well, how i play rogues is i prefer to play them less as the stabby in the back and more as the um intelligent assassin skill monkey you need to so, play um the investigator man yeah no i want to play an investigator i also want to play an asshole character who basically pretends to be blind oh and, i remember that character I remember what, idea I, yeah it's so bad let's not talk about that stupid idea that was a funny idea i don't even care um basically in my eyes play a ninja instead of a rogue that's yeah. it yeah ninjas, pass your turn denzel ninjas, <laughs> ninjas, ninjas are uh, basically um a better rogues be- the, the better rogues, man. It's, an, it's a technically i see <laughs> the ninja as a uh, expansion of is. Um, but you get key the, and invisibility. The the rogue and to some extent the way I've seen people play rogues and rangers have been uh, their the um, I'm the brooding mysterious type who says nothing and it's is a trope that's been done way too many times. I actually mm-hmm. do the opposite. I purposely play mine as over flirtatious and make them appear foolish in order to mm-hmm. lord the guards of everyone. The the way thematically I see a rogue you best utilized is the face of the party. What's the thing? Yeah, they make- um, rogue party faces are good. Like, yeah. They're the ones who, you know, can bluff your way out of a situation, diplomatize with, you know, the people. Um, to some extent, bards can do that. That's, that's bards kind of- are better at it. But yeah. Bards are better at it, but uh, if you want to play a rogue, you'll be prepared for a lot of social encounters. That's kind of why I get frustrated when I play rogues and I don't feel like I have enough skills because I have to take the I have to take sense motive and I have to take diplomacy and I have to take trial and I have to take my <laughs> perception and... My knowledge is, and my sneaking, and my trap disarmament, and my use magic items. And then at the end of the day, I'm just like, God, nothing for what I want. Like, so, 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 yeah, you, you, you need to put you need to put points in like dexterity, intelligence, just, charisma. Yeah, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of um, ability scores. Yeah, depending on your build, rogues can suffer from mad as well. Yeah. Um, but sometimes they can't. It really depends how you build the character. Uh, they are so much better in fifth edition, like a lot better because you can just choose dex and you get dex to hit and damage with mm. finesse weapons well rogues can be also kind of good in the sense that you can still get int and you can kind of get sneak attack damage from yeah. distance I mean mm-hmm. I'd say that's one of the better ones to do because you can get your sneak attack a lot easier in battles by mm-hmm. hiding yeah. yeah I mean of course then if it, you know, it's nothing compared to say 5th edition where you can be a halfling rogue and hide in people's like squares uh, behind them you can hide yeah. behind people as a lightful halfling and well, then you, move through their square and stab people you can technically do that in 3.5 as well back when the rules for hiding were kind of dumb and you could hide um hide behind people or things if you rolled well enough yeah the, but there was a negative to it because you had yeah. light cover or something i can't remember the rules yeah. exactly um that's rogues now we're starting to get to the meaty classes um i remember when first looking at pathfinder this class the sorcerer jumped out at me almost immediately i love bloodlines flavor dripping all in around my mouth <laughs> i really enjoyed them also they make the coolest faces the most interesting characters you can make the coolest backgrounds just like warlocks like when you have something intrinsically tied like your family has the blood of dragons in it how <laughs> well you see talk about it when a woman and a dragon love each other very much they need to get some surgery because it's not gonna work it's called the polymorph spell. Oh, of course. Yes. <laughs> that's how they. So do that's it, right? why dragons are wizards. Sorcerers. And sorcerers. <laughs> that makes sense to me now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I love sorcerers. Um, they're almost a wizard, which wizard is meant to be the greatest and all powerful <laughs> class. Personally, I always start to make a wizard and go, "I was going to be a sorcerer." <laughs> Spontaneous spellcasting for the world. I I like simplicity in my gaming, <laughs> and sorcerers are simple. Yep. And I enjoy them so much. That's all. You but have a sorcerer. I have a sorcerer. Yes, I do. Um, and a certain prestige class. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, the basically um, back in three point five, there were, I played a sorcerer when I went to went to introduction and how to play a magic class in um, in three point five. Sorcerer yeah. was the such easier than all the others. Yeah, I always point people towards <laughs> sorcerer if you want to play magic. Um, and uh, basically, I read them and went, you know what? I want to become a uh, Prestige class called Dragon Disciple. Yep. Yeah. For, for many I'm pretty years, sure you did too. For, for many years, for many a year, I tried to get to this Dragon Disciple Prestige class, but 
always uh, never yeah, got there. Yeah, you can never quite get there, can you? <laughs> no, it's not even that good. It Shut up, man. Hey, man. You don't Dragon know how to pay. You're a Dragon Disciple. Dragon bro. <laughs> yeah, fist bumps. Um, but, yeah, um, like, I think the two vi- most viable classes in the core rulebook that can get to a Dragon Disciple are Bards and, um, and Sorcerers. And, well, it's the only way you can do it. I yeah. I think you have to have Charisma, don't you? Uh, basically, to become a... It has to be spontaneous casting. Yeah, you just need spontaneous casting. It has to be arcane, so you can't be and, miracle. Yes, spontaneous uh, arcane oh, casting okay. and five ranks in... Technically, a Blood Rager can do it, but yeah. they, um, because you have to have level <laughs> three spells, you have to be such fucking high level. Uh, <laughs> uh, five And five ranks in um, Knowledge Arcana. So that, that's oh, the... Blood Rager. Yeah, that, that's the, um, the thing. But basically, it's the best class for introduction to... How to cast? I just like magic. spontaneous spellcasters. Yeah, it's yeah. Really, it's yeah, yeah. It's, like Warlock. It's so much easier. It's not even spontaneous. It's just spell-like abilities. It's so much. It's so much easier just because you can go. Okay, I have magic missile, and you can just magic missile all day if you want to, or you can well, you know cast other, all your other spells. Yeah, yeah. yeah. level yeah. one if you have twenty charisma five times per day, but without without having to prepare. Yeah, that's that's what I do like about sorcerers. I don't necessarily also. I also don't like the whole. If the DM doesn't like you and you're a wizard, he can always target your spellbook, and that can be really annoying. Yeah. And so sorcerers that's don't have to... being a Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, you, you'd say it's like it's being a dick, but it does happen sometimes. I mean, really? Technically, when a fireball hits you, hits your spellbook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so sorcerers, <laughs> sorcerers don't have that issue, because their yeah. knowledge... But with the blood uh, lines, but, but before in, um, in 3.5, if you wanted to play, like, the ultimate spell caster, you would have gone a wizard and yeah, sorcer- sorcerers were just your introduction. Oh. oh look look who's next? It's a wizard. <laughs> this class. It's the best class in the game apparently. I feel <laughs> it is, but I don't like that it is. It there's a lot of thing like oh wizard is the best and you have to play the wizard this way, like you're not allowed to go evocation, you have to go all this way, but it's I like Fireball too much. Alright. I just really like Fireball. <laughs> Fire, 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 Fire. I <laughs> You can't get it there. You can't put it in normal spot slots. I think my mm. favourite thing about Fireball is that one adventure we had where we all were invisible because of you. We fireballed the crap out of a castle. There was only and one guy left. Haste. Yeah, and there was only one guy <laughs> left. And, and this is in uh, 3.5 but... where you could cast two spells when you did that. You get yeah. an extra standard action. So basically, imagine this: you get a guy running towards a fort that's heavily barricaded, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, fireballs start coming from the trees, incinerating all the people around. That everyone dies except for one guy, and he can't see anyone else because they're invisible, except for this one guy battle charging. Greater invisibility. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was greater. Yeah, well, it was. It had to be because if it wasn't, he'd, he'd be seen. Yeah, it was. <laughs> we had some but, I mean, there's not much more you can say with wizards. They're powerful classes. They're a lot of fun. You can make a lot of flavor with them. Um, they're really hard to micromanage. I never suggest it for a new player. Um, yeah. Just play Sorcerer. Yeah. Wizards are sweet. Um, I personally don't like to play them because there's so much micromanagement and bookkeeping you need to do. Mm. Literal bookkeeping yeah. because of your spell book. They make great control, though. Have, they make the best control mages, I think. Yeah, sweet as shit, yeah. They're really good. I haven't even played a wizard before, I don't think. Have you played a wizard? Of course, you played a... Yeah, I, I ran I ran a camp... I, I purposely ran, like, a one-shot joke what, campaign um, where everyone was a wizard and everything in the world was a wizard. Okay. What about yourself, Denzel? Um, closest I've come to a wizard is... Um, the Sorcerer? Magus, actually. Magus yeah. are awesome. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, before we clear this up our little talk on all the different classes and stuff and just ideas for them um, any classes you guys want to specifically talk about I'm going to let Denzel talk first cause I, 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 Denzel, I, any other classes I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to just harp on about war because I think I did enough about that and the other one I think I, I had a formula I want to talk about well we've, we've gone through the classes but I would like to say that um, the races do play a, a big part yeah in, actually in the, uh, um, I completely forgot about the races <laughs> So oh let's God. talk about that for a second. Because <laughs> we've gone straight into classes. Okay, so I races. think we'll just break it down quickly. Yo, races, certain races work for certain classes. You can play it anyway, but it'll be suboptimal. And sometimes the thematic idea isn't necessarily good. The Dwarven Bard is one. It can be cool, 
the dwarven sorcerer is something that sometimes you want to do. You can actually do it. Um, just dwarven cleric. Did you know the dwarven cleric is actually not a very good build? Negative mm. charisma, man. No channel energies. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the charisma. Is the mad good. gets worse. Mm. Sucks. <sighs> I mean, there's other stuff you can talk about races. Humans generally the master race, I think. Um, yep. It's that extra feat and that extra skill. It, yeah, it just so went good. over. Um, half elves are probably my favorite race. Yep, half elves. Well, they have they they, they half elves are my favorite answer to um slumber witches because they can't you can't be magically put to sleep. What's wrong with slumber, slumber witches? witches? Everything. <laughs> uh, elves, um, actually, elves. I see another bis, uh, big misconception with them. I don't want to talk about how them they're ideas. built. They are the high elf. Most people and how they've written path. This is in Pathfinder mainly. They're written as being a wood elf because it actually says they like to live at nature. But they're written as a high elf, like a Silvestani and stuff, <laughs> which isn't from Dragonlands, where they have high int or a great elf. They're not actually good rangers because of the hidden hit to con. Plus dex is good, but you can get that as human. Yeah. But the plus to int's useless. I'm sorry, I just don't like knife ears. You guys can talk about them, but I don't want to. Um, they make yeah. good wizards. They make sweet wizards. Oh, they sweet, do. Sweet uh, um, maguses. Sweet maguses are the dervish dancer magus. Mm-hmm. Um, my my I magus that I played was a dervish dancing uh, elf. They actually make don't make too much uh, bad. Well, I guess the hit the con does hurt the alchemist. No, they make sweet aquas. Yeah. They're um really good alchemists. So they get that's what you really kinda of wanna play, but if you wanna play like a druid or a ranger, it's not the best build. Um if you wanna go yeah. an elven elven thing, thematically, go for it. You're probably gonna take a hit, you're gonna to have to be very careful. But overall, you know, um The tree speaker thing, which is a druid archetype that uh high offs get though they get Plant familiars is cool. Yeah, I mean, oh, uh, that one. That, that's really good. And you it's... can have a little tree. <laughs> yeah, you can even have a floating fungus ball. Oh, God, why? And it poisons people. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess races are pretty big, but sadly, classes make the most. Yeah. Most of the races you can generally see by their stat bonus is where it's going, but generally, half orcs, half elves, and humans are pretty much the best <laughs> race. Sadly, dwarves don't fit many. It's, I think dwarves kind of get the short end of the stick because they have such a their, their movement speed is gimped in that sort of way. Yeah. That they Because I've I've played off martial fighters before and I hate it because you can never keep up to anyone. The yeah. only time I can imagine it being good is if you're a barbarian, but even then your speed just gets back up to the normal it would be. Yeah. The thing is, is that most melee class this is mainly with twenty point buy. You want that plus two to strength when you're being a martial class. And as a dwarf, you generally can't get it because you want an eighteen. I, mean, I feel if you want to be decent in melee, because it just the numbers, it's how they work out. The, the problem I have with dwarves is I see so many of them like cut their charisma even further to the point. It's five of charisma, five charisma is just stupid <laughs> because, and they bump up all their other stats. And yeah, like, why? The what you're talking about, laddie? The thing is also, yeah, actually, actually, I have I have a dwarf fighter who's only got an yeah. eight charisma. Yeah. Um, he's a two weapon fighter with dwarf and war axe, but still, I guess me Google. <laughs> I don't like to go below eight, so generally I keep yeah. it eight charisma. Uh, if I'm going to go a low stats, usually eight, but that's kind of yeah. I mean, that's most of the right ra- uh, the races. I mean, there are obviously side ones like so many Asimo, personal Kitsune. hatreds. Asimars, I hate them. I hate Kitsunes, Kitsune. different reasons, but I hate them. I think I, I'm pretty sure I hate Kitsune more than I hate knifers. Yes, because Kitsune yeah. can turn into knife ears. No, it's not because of that. It's just I don't like Kitsunes. I don't no, like... they're going to turn human. Can't they? They're going to turn human. Ah, oh, damn. Humans that look like elves. It's a thing. <laughs> My favourite um, is, the, is the little dark elves. Tom, say the name. Uh, Swerble. Swerf Nurblin. Blah, say the name. Uh, Swerf um, I'll, I'll, I'll get the name. But, but other, other core races you got are the half orcs. Uh, which, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't usually yeah. see a lot of half orcs being played. It's strange. I see a lot of half orcs. Swerf barbarian. Swerf Bar- 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 I'll never be able to say it, but I love it. It's half yeah. half orc barbarians and half orc monks. Actually, I've seen a few of them. I've just never. I'm half orc. Are we talking them. about dingleberry? Yes, we are. <laughs> I don't think that's an optimal build. <laughs> no. It's a hilarious build, though. Um, funny as hell. I'll definitely give the that. That's a character in PFS that we get to put up with. <laughs> so that was interesting. Yeah. He is a half orc with his only belongings being a loincloth. 
Actually, we didn't. We didn't and co- shit loads of money he doesn't spend. <laughs> One thing we didn't cover actually is yeah. the um the, the the stereotypical swashbuckler, like with the rapiers and the sort of. Well, talk, let's talk about the swashbucklers. Because I, I love me some swashbuckler and duelists, but up until the advanced class guide, there was they they, they, they weren't very good. They're really good now. Yeah, because they yeah. can counterattack. Yeah, no, I'd love that. Oh, yeah, so cool. So good. They can go. Um, I hit you. No, you don't. I reposit. Yeah. What? Oh, look, I bet you. I stab you. Repost. Yeah. Uh, apparently, it's actually quite overpowered. Um, yeah, I've heard it's quite overpowered. The um, the swashbuckler, the swashbuckler is good, but basically, I think it was the the um prestige class. I think was duelist, which was yes. They were trying to do the same thing. Uh, it took too long to get into that. If yeah. you could, if yeah. you could enter at third, it'd be good. Yeah, but you can't. But so. you, so you basically, you know, swashbuckler negates the whole fact of one of them. Yeah. yeah. And also their charisma base, which is cooler. I don't know. I, I like the swashbuckler. The, the um, swashbuckler yeah. is, is pretty much the, um, like, because it's using panache, which is pretty much grip, same thing. As yeah, the it's the gunslinger. Gun oh, I think we have some things to say about the gunslinger. Uh, don't be boys. <laughs> I love me some gunslinger. Don't, don't talk about shit gunslingers, yeah? Mm. Musket axe. Yes. I think Denzel has some pet peeves with that. Come on. Uh, so, so being being a, a GM of mainly Pathfinder Society, and thankfully I haven't put up much with uh, too many gunslingers, but I don't play one. The, 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 so the, what the, you're saying is I should play a mysterious stranger and start going to Pathfinder Society with Tom, right? Mysterious stranger bard, do it. No, nah, just just forego, forego the bard part and just be a mysterious you know, stranger gunslinger. I'm sure Dun, um, Denzel will love it. See, I also like the fact that the, I'll be my slumber witch. They they <laughs> they don't have that high. Um, like so if I catch you flat footed chances are like you down pretty quickly yeah <laughs> what are you talking about you can get really high armor you can get medium you can get breastplate um you're threatening me Denzel I'll be you're threatening me you can get medium armor with gunslings my friend pew, pew, no pew, dude pew. just go mysterious stranger gun tank you're uh, you can't by the way I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you can't you can't but... take two archetypes no oh you can as long as they don't chat um take away multiple things uh, but Play Zenarcher Quigon Monk. That's how you achieve mad damage. I don't think you can because it changes your key. Both of them do. Basically, uh, the the problem I have with Gunsling is the fact that they can um, use touch. Yeah. Attack. So. Yeah. They only get to good to level 5 is the problem because in my opinion, my personal hatred in this game is rolling a dice and not getting any pluses to damage when you're rolling damage. It sucks. Yeah, no, <laughs> I've, I've done that. Rolling open 1d12. I call it open, by the way. You're rolling an open. So nothing, it's just air, basically, your dice. You When you're rolling that d12, it can be a 12 or a 1. That's too different for me. I don't like that. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. The reason I like gunslingers is because, again, I feel like with the touch AC, I'm less susceptible to the swing mm-hmm. because of it. Because that's I have... why you like warlocks. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Anything that, is pretty sweet. anything that takes out the swing is golden with me. Yeah. The the times for um crit though is, is a pain in the ass with the range weapon. I have never crit with the gunslinger, so I wouldn't know. Well, I've they're... seen people crit with them and they're nasty. But... Oh yeah. Um... but with like just because I like using pistols rather than muskets. Sub optimal arm terrible. Actually no, pistols are better. Pistols are good. Oh really? Until you can get advanced firearms. Yeah, if the DM ever alerts you, which is probably or use not cartridges. Happen. But um, pistol was uh, kind of better because the pistol arrow allows you extra damage and yes. stuff. That's the thing. I, I like. I, I just like pistols, and that's the thing. Yeah. You have like that feat. You usually do, it's yeah. usually just like an open D six. <laughs> yeah, like the revolver was really sweet too. So. Oh yeah, yeah. but the revolver's advanced tech. That's the issue. Oh uh, yeah, it is. But see, yeah. I do love me some revolver though. I love the, six shooters. The thing, the thing um, uh, about gunsling is, is like I would like to play the pistol arrow and then finally go into a um, like pirate. Um, yeah prestige class however every time I look at that I just feel dirty going it's a gunsling actually one of, <laughs> one of the issues I had which goes back into feet traps um, and sorry feet tech no it, it's trap option there is a um, with like a there's, there's a feat that's meant to be an uh, entire skill tree line around using a gun and sword but you can circumvent <laughs> all of that which is getting I think two or three feats by simply getting um, death shooter which is you just you, you don't threaten when you shoot in close range that requires specialization and weapon focus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, that might be a thing. I don't know if there's a gun thing for it, but I know with the bow, you need a specialization and weapon yeah. focus. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It, to get it, required, yep. <laughs> it required less, um, it had less pre- um, prerequisites, and you didn't have to take so many feats, and you got a much better outcome. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've got to find what that is, but um, I know that 
I can't recall off the top of my head because yeah. it's been a while, but I do know it exists. Yeah, so I, I was looking. At I don't like gunslingers because at the start their action economy sucks and their yeah. output is just not good enough. Yeah, well, it's because you need like a lot of feats because you need those rapid yeah. reloads. Otherwise, you spend so much. Even time then, reloading. it's not that good. Yeah, you have to pretty much buy a rapidly reload. Otherwise, you just even if you do like it's a move action to reload a pistol and it's a standard action yeah. to reload a rifle and that's with the speed up. Mm-hmm. Even uh, yeah, until you get a revolver, it's really not kind of worth it. Yeah, either way. Um, I think that's pretty much it on character creation as a whole. Mm-hmm. I don't really have that much more to say. We, I guess we really went to the in-depth nitty-gritty of all different classes. Hopefully that helps. Um, maybe if you guys have any views and things that may have been, that you feel about classes that you can input, go yeah. ahead. And character creation in general, maybe, uh, maybe your favorite characters, best way you feel to use races and characters, make character ideas, whatever. Yeah. Put it in anything in the comments below. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Any other closing comments, guys? Uh, the only one I say is, um, even though what we've talked about is trying to be mostly optimal, like if you have an idea yeah. and it's suboptimal, play it. If you have one with it, go for it. That's in the end really what it's I wouldn't about. suggest it when doing modules, though. Not modules, no. but if you're having a home game and everybody's going to take a suboptimal class and your GM Or the GM knows, and the GM, GM is willing and... to let you play your thing. Yeah. But in, in modules, it's made, especially in higher levels. Lower levels is not too bad. In but one higher two. levels, it's made a certain way. Yeah. And it's made in mind that your characters have all these things. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. I don't want to... I, I never like feeling like I should tell people how to play because I always feel like people should play how they want to. Oh, yeah. They're play like, your friggin' dwarf bard. Do it. Yeah. But the, uh, the real problem I have is that I feel like, especially with Pathfinder, a lot of the official stuff you you get punished even for like for being that like for being that suboptimal like you mm-hmm. that yeah. especially with like modules and official books unless you have a dm who's really understanding and can cater um but even then it kind of relies the rest of your party to also be kind of suboptimal because otherwise the balancing goes all yeah. wonky and that's the thing I that's the thing I because I, I play a ton of suboptimal characters but right. the thing is I could never have fun because to me what was fun was being able to contribute and help my allies and that just I couldn't do that because I was suboptimal oh. yeah sorry guys I just I just remember the thought of one of the char- uh, characters that I was making it's a, it's a troll character basically he is a, a bardic dwarf oh god um he has five charisma mm-hmm. he actually wields uh massive weapons in two hands uh, he's actually a geisha archetype. Okay. So um, he likes to do tea ceremonies. <laughs> so basically how this guy works is he is actually in, in denial that his master was actually a bard because he hates them. <laughs> but he's trained as a bard, but he doesn't realize it. But he's a really bad bud. I'm sorry. This is I, almost as bad as my guy who's I was going to actually bring him trying... to PFS one day. But I decided against it because... It, it was just when he made his army, the Slumber Witch. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually going to bring this guy to a game and just be like, because I was not going to say that I was a bard. But until I started doing a tea ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> like, like to point out, we have uh, Rasmus, who d- d- is the worst bard ever. Has no, oh, I don't know. This guy seems worse. It reminds <laughs> me of um one of the... Uh... Tripod versus the dragon, the fighter who longs to be a bard but is absolutely terrible at it. <laughs> yeah. And um, you're what are you good at? I'm good at guilting people and making um, making people feel bad. Great, you can be the cleric. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alrighty guys. Um Well, uh, uh this time I think we'll really say what we're gonna be doing next episode because we're not too sure. So whatever I'm it is. I'm hoping we'll we see. can do some Shadowrun creation after this person. Yeah, maybe that that sounds good. Uh Shadowrun character creation. I feel like we can say a lot on that because oh, of the yeah. world. But, so um, definitely Shadowrun character creation will be up. Uh still up in the air is of course our actual play. Uh, I'm not too sure when we're gonna be getting down to that, but when the time's free, we'll definitely start doing that. Organizing players and times yeah, is never definitely. is never an easy thing. No, but, it's um, not easy. But that will definitely be on uh, fifth edition. And, yeah, uh, any other ideas that you guys have for episodes, chuck them in the comment section below. Yeah, and um, you guys, we, talk, we talked a little about, again, in this one, official sort of organized play. Do you guys want to say anything or plug anything here? Because I know um, you have a big hand in <laughs> helping run some stuff, Denzel. So yeah, um, do you want to give any shout-outs to any of your players or to any of the organizations you've look, worked what, with? Look, what, what I say now at the moment is pretty much if you're interested in actually jumping in and joining in the Pathfinder, um, definitely go to the Pezo uh, website. We'll chuck it in the 
link below. Yeah, I'll, I'll handle all that. So yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, head head over to there. Find your nearest place. You know, contact the um the venue, the coordinator, or the um or the lieutenant, and yeah, definitely go down, have a try, have a play, see how it goes, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Yeah, and because this is also again a um episode about sort of character creation and the ups and downs and the sort of <laughs> viewpoints of two guys who are a bit more min-maxy than perhaps we do and we ever deserve to be. Woo! But um, just because you're also like a bit um, a larger member sort of, the, of the community helping run these organized plays, um, do you have any sort of words or advice for new players who are perhaps listening to this who are interested in Pathfinder on perhaps like whether they can come in or where, um, where do you think a good resource to start is? Good resources. Um, basically, what I'd say is find a like what you like playing. Like, if you like swinging swords, try being a fighter or a paladin or a barbarian and stuff like that. Um, what you find natural closest to you first uh, is usually easier for you to, to play. As a, as I'd a say, even though we're saying don't do traps and all that, play what you want. Yeah. Um, a lot of people I've seen go, oh, you know, I'm in D and I guess I'll play the fighter. No, you can play the druid if you want. Personally, it's it's harder on the DM that's got to help you play it. But if you want to play what you want, play what you want. That's what it's about. This is it our, is this yeah. is our, this is our escapism. And even like if you don't have fun, you can you're always free to try something new. Honestly, one of the better um, one of the biggest recommendations I can give is that if you don't necessarily have like if you're all tied on cash and don't necessarily have all the money, there are some good free resources that are working with pays on the open license like the um, um, yeah. D20 SRD. So. Yeah. You can always give that sort of thing a look, so you can never necessarily feel as if you're uninformed. It may be a bit overwhelming at the beginning for new players, and I would definitely recommend going to a Pathfinder Society game meetup day, or um, whatever yeah. you guys call them first, because um, so you can talk and meet with I people. Mean, what you could do if you want to get into Pathfinder Society is easily just go to a session beforehand and talk to some people, maybe people will help you make a character. I know I'd certainly help someone if they came to something like that. Mm-hmm. Also, sitting in on games can also be fun, so you can get a yeah. kind of feel. Yeah. I mean, like... Yeah. Different DMs run games differently. And another thing I could possibly suggest, although I wouldn't suggest this for maybe newer players, but if you have trouble finding people who are um, in your direct area, I know some people are in remoter parts of the world or mm-hmm. remoter parts of the, um, of the country. And, oh you can, and you can always sort of find games on Roll20. Roll20 is another good place to go, yeah. Yeah, it's a very nice virtual tabletop. It, yeah, I always have to be cautious because, again, it is the internet. You're never sure because you can never meet these people face-to-face whether or not you're going to get a mixed bag, a good or a bad. Um, yeah. And for other people, I know uh, one of our um, our players is a big um, big player on play-by-post on the page. Play-by-post, yeah. That's mm. another way to do it. Yeah, so with that in mind, I hope we've given you some resources if you don't know. Um, if, you, if, you, <laughs> if you were interested in this and had, some, um, had no experience, we hope we've given you the tools and the sort of intrigue to go out and try Pathfinder for yourself. And for those who are more experienced, we hope you have enjoyed, for the most part, our ramblings on everything. I'm sure your opinions differentiate from ours, especially. I'm sure a couple of you are rather offended by my knife for your comments. I've just never met an elf I really like, so that's just my own advice. My elves won't help. Maybe you like like a zombie? I don't know. Anyway, (laughs) so um, that's everything. Uh, I'm Master Blast, signing off. I'm Denzel. Catch you later. And I am the ever-illustrious hobo.